Let's continue factoring. This time, let's look at the sum and difference of squares. Now, we have to realize that this is based on what we learned in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, which was if you want to factor x squared minus 36. Since x squared is a uh, square and 36 is a square and they're separated by a negative sign, this is called the difference of two squares. And when we factor that, that's going to be x plus 6, x minus 6. If we want to check our work, we can. x plus 6, x minus 6, let's FOIL that. That's x times x is x squared. x times minus 6 is minus 6x. 6x times x, I'm sorry, 6 times x is plus 6x. And 6 times a minus 6 is a minus 36. Since this is a minus 6x and a plus 6x, they cancel each other out, and you get x squared minus 36. And then once you recognize that pattern, you can very easily factor a number of uh, binomials. x squared minus 100, for example, x plus 10, x minus 10, x squared minus 144, x plus 12, x minus 12, x squared minus 25, x minus 5, x plus 5. The order doesn't matter. The key is that you have a square here. So it's a 1 plus and 1 minus. The difference of two squares. Now we come to a slightly more difficult problem. If we want to factor x squared minus 100, we've seen that that's x plus 10 and x minus 10. And the key is, is this is a square and this is a square and a minus is in between the difference of two squares. So let's factor x squared minus 7. So you'll often be told in Algebra 2 or in Algebra 1 that you can't factor this. Um, you can factor this, but it's going to be x plus the square root of 7 x minus the square root of 7. Now that's what we're doing here. This is 100. This is a 10 and a 10, but 10 and 10 are just the square root of 100. So if this is 7, this should be square root of 7 and square root of 7. If we're going to factor x squared minus 13, that's x plus square root of 13, x minus square root of 13. If you want to factor x squared minus 40, that's x plus square root of 40, x minus square root of 40. Now you can simplify that further because square root of 40 is square root of 4 and square root of 10, so that's x plus 2 root 10, x minus 2 root 10. We can get even more complicated when you have a problem like factoring x squared plus 81. So now we have this is a square and this is a square, but they're added together. So the first thing that we, we need to realize is that a lot of people will think this is x plus 9 and x plus 9. And we can see that that's not true by foiling this out. If we foil this out, we get x times x is x squared. x times 9 is 9x. 9 times x is 9x. 9 times 9 is 81. That's going to equal to x squared plus 18x plus 81. And that's very definitely not x squared plus 81. So that does not work. The way we can factor this is by using i. If we have x squared plus 81, so if you have a square and a square with a plus in between, it's x plus 9i, x minus 9i. If you had x squared plus 100, x plus 10i, x minus 10i. So these are easy once you know the pattern. x squared plus 36 is x plus 6i, x minus 6i. Now we can check our work by foiling this out and see what's going on here. We have x times x is x squared. 
x times minus 9i is a minus 9xi. 9i times x is a plus 9xi. And 9i times 9i, a positive and negative, is a minus 9i squared. These are going to cancel. And then the minus 1, I mean the i squared is a minus 1. So you get x squared, and you get minus time times minus 1, which is a plus 9. And that's the reason this works. So now we can factor the sum of squares. Since we can factor the sum of squares, we can also factor it when one of them is not a square. So let's factor x squared plus 7. That's x, x. This is going to be plus square root of 7 minus square root of 7, but that's going to give you a negative number here, so there's going to be an i here and an i here. So this, in a sense, is a mixture of two problems. We have x squared minus 11 is x plus root 11, x minus root 11. We have x squared plus 25 is x plus 5i, x minus 5i. If you notice what's happening here, because this is not a perfect square, we have a square root in both of these terms. Because this is a positive, you have an i. So here we have a 7, which is not a perfect square, and we have a positive. So we have a square root of 7, and we also have an i in both. Let's do one more of those. x squared plus 13. That's x plus square root of 13 x minus the square root of 13, because 13 is not a perfect square, but since it's a positive, then you're going to have an i in both. The way that I remember this, so let's have something to memorize here. I memorized four problems, x squared minus 25, x plus 5, x minus 5. That's pretty easy for me. x squared minus 7. Exactly the same problem except when we take the square root of 25 we don't get an integer. I mean we get an integer, 5, but when we take the square root of 7 we don't. So that's the same problem but you have a square root. If you have x squared plus 36 that's just like the first problem, except for instead of a negative, you have a positive, so you're going to have to use an i. So that's x plus 6i and x minus 6i. If we combine these two problems, x squared, let's say, plus 13, that's x plus the square root of 13, x minus the square root of 13, because 13 is not a perfect square, but since it's a positive, it has an i, just like this one. So x plus i squared of 13, x minus i of 13. So what I would do is memorize these four problems and use them as patterns.